Okay, now for question number four from P3 sample assessment paper. Question about integration. Integration was not part of P3 or the old C3 papers. So you won't find this in um, the old C3 past papers that you look at. So something to be uh, aware of when you're preparing for your P3 exam. It's now something that's included. Uh, the basic part of integration that used to be in P4 as now, uh, C4 has now moved to P3. So you should be um, aware of that and uh, remember that when you're revising. Now, here we have um, to find the definite integral um, between the limits of 5 and 13 for 1 over 2x minus 1 with respect to x. And uh, this is a type of reverse of the chain rule type of question, okay, where the numerator is of the form of the differential of what's in the denominators. You're integrating something of this form here. The numerator is of the form or the order of what's the, the differential of the denominator. So if you differentiate 2x minus 1, you get 2, which is a constant. And on the numerator, you have 1, which is a constant. So we can use the reverse of the chain rule to integrate this. Now, once you've started integrating, do not write the integral sign. Okay, once you've started, once, once you've actually integrated the um, expression. Okay, so integrate this between 5 and 13. So I'm going to start integrating this straight away. So I'll say, okay, this is like um, the lin of the modulus of 2x minus 1. And when you're using lin and you, you integrate, you have to use the modulus of what's in there. Because whatever's inside here cannot be negative. The lin of something negative will be undefined. And then because um, you're integrating now, so you integrate this function, it becomes lin of 2x minus 1. Then you have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. You always divide by the differential of what's inside the function. So something in this form integrates to lin of the modulus of whatever's inside the function, divided by the differential of whatever's inside the function. So the differential with respect to x of 2x minus 1 is 2. So you divide by 2, and now we have to um, evaluate that between the limits of 5 to 13. Okay, so this is like saying half of the lin of the modulus of 2x minus 1 the limits of 13 and 5 and what I'm going to do I know I can use a power law to simplify things so what I'll do is I'll put this is like the lin of the modulus of 2x minus 1 to the power of a half okay, using the power law 13 and 5 here and now I'm going to start um, substituting the values in of 13 and 5. So this is going to give me lin of the modulus of 2 times 13, which is 26, minus 1, which is 25, okay, to the power of a half, and minus the lin of um, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1, which is 9, to the power of a half, okay. Remember, we don't have to put plus c because we're using a definite integral here. Um, now we're going to have the lin of the square root of 25 is 5. The lin of the modulus of 5 minus the lin of 9 to the power of a half means the square root of 9, which is 3. And finally, we can write this as lin of 5 over 3. Okay, now I don't need the modulus sign because I know that both 5 and 3 are both positive, so there's no need for the modulus sign now. So it's the lin of 5 over 3 using the division law. So now I know this is... This is my answer in its simplest form, lin of 5 over 3. Okay? All right, so that was using the reverse of the chain rule. Some people just memorize this form, that something like this becomes, you know, 1 over equals this A times the lin of whatever's inside there, but I like to understand it in terms of the reverse of the chain rule. Okay, then part 2 is a trick, a differentiation, or sorry, integration using tricks the trig functions. Now, we know that the integral of the sine of 2x, well, we should know that integral of sine theta with respect to theta is minus cosine theta. Okay, because if you differentiate cosine theta, you get minus sine theta. Right, so we should know that. That's one of the, the rules that we should know. As for sec x tan x, or sec theta tan theta, the integral of sec theta times tan theta, that's something, if you look at the formula book, you'll see that's given, okay? This, this is the, the formula book, the part with differentiation, but you can work in reverse and see that 
the differential of sec theta is sec x tan x, therefore the integral of sec x tan x is sec x. Okay, so we can say here that the integral of sec theta tan theta is sec theta. Okay, so we've got what we need to solve this question. So we're going to integrate this with the, now really this question should have brackets. I don't know why they don't have them there. It should be like that. Anyway, uh, so we're going to integrate. Now once I start integrating, I don't write the integral sign anymore. So I'm going to have sine of 2x, which is going to give me minus cosine of 2x. But because it's, there's a function inside the function, I have to divide by the differential what's inside the function. So I have to divide by 2, so that's going to be minus a half cosine 2x. And then I'm going to have um, plus, now the, diff, the integral of sec x tan x is sec x. So I'll have sec of a third of x, but then I have to divide by a third. Okay, I'll just write this here, divide by a third. Okay, and the limits are between 0 and pi over 2. Now when you divide by a third, it's like you're multiplying by, by 3. So this will be minus a half cosine of 2x plus 3 secant of a third x and the limits between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, now just to make everything simple before I substitute values in, that's minus a half times cosine of 2x and I'm going to have plus, now secant of something is the same as 1 over cosine of that same thing. The third letter of the, third letter of the reciprocal function tells you what it's a reciprocal of. So secant, the third letter is a C, so that's a reciprocal of the cosine um, function. So we've got 3 over cosine of 1 third x between the limits of 0 and pi over 2. Now I'm ready to start substituting the values in. Okay, so let's start doing that. So we've got pi over 2, substitute into here, so you have minus a half times cosine. 2 times pi over 2 is pi, plus 3 over cosine, a third of pi over 2, a third of pi over 2 is pi over 6. Okay, now, one of the things that a lot of people do, because in P2 we did um, definite integration, we didn't have to deal with these kind of functions like cosine and e to the power of things and li so basically whenever you saw zero as one of the limits you just ignore that's the, the second part so it's going to be zero but that's not always the case for the type of functions we deal with now so for example the, the, you know e to the power of zero gives you one and the cosine of zero gives you one so you see zero or the zero is going to make it, the whole thing become a zero it won't so let's just put the values in never ignore it in, in once you get to this stage now. So cosine uh, minus a half times the cosine of zero, which we know that's gonna, not going to give us zero. So we'll have something here. Plus three over the cosine of a half times zero, which is also zero. And that means that that whole expression, cosine of zero is going to be one. So that won't, um, that won't be zero either. So you'll end up with something here, which if you ignored it, would get the wrong answer. So we know the cosine of pi, okay, if you put it in your calculator, you'll find it, but the cosine of pi is minus one. This is how the cosine goes. At pi over 2 it goes to 0, at pi it goes to minus 1. So this is minus a half times minus 1. Minus a half times minus 1. I'll just write it in full so we can see what's going on. Plus 3 over, now the cosine of pi over 6 is like the cosine of 30 degrees, which is root 3 over 2. So I'll just write this 3 over root 3 over 2. Minus, now a half times minus, minus a half times cosine of 0, which is 1 plus 3 over cosine of 0, which is 3 over 1. Let me just make that a bit neater. Okay, and now we can evaluate this thing. This is going to give us minus a half times minus 1, which is half, plus, and this is going to give me 6 over root 3. If you divide by something, by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal, so that's going to be 3 times 2 over root 3, which is 6 over root 3. Then you're going to have minus, and this will give you minus a half plus 3, which is uh, 5 over 2. Okay, so we're left with a half minus 5 over 2. A half minus 5 over 2. Um, yeah. Which is going to give you minus 4 over 2 plus 6 over root 3. Now, 6 over root 3, I should, in the simplest form, I can't leave the denominator as a third. I have to 
rationalize the denominator. So when I rationalize the denominator, this is going to give me minus 2 plus, this will be 6 root 3 over 3. So you end up with minus 2 plus 2 root 3. That's the answer in its simplest form. I've simplified, I've rationalized the denominator and I've written as a simplified third. And there we have the answer to this question. Okay, that's part one and two done of that integration question number four.